Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Limits VN. Uh, uh, today uh, we're gonna play Limits. Uh, I'm so wow. good at intros. <laughs> How did you know? Dots. Dots? Hello? You find yourself in a void. You're still breathing hard is the only thing that you can hear. Tate, can you hear me? Who's there? You can feel a faint ethereal voice echoing around you. You're not able to identify its direction, but it is close. Oh, you're actually able to hear me. Great. Can you see me though? Hello? I'm waving my hand right in front of you. N no? What are you? Straight to the point, huh? Fine. I didn't appreciate your snarky remarks from earlier, by the way. What? What did I do? What we do? It was uncalled for. What do you mean? You know what you did. I don't know what I did. Is Drake trying to call me out here with like a special build or what? <laughs> Need some soap for that dirty mouth of yours. <laughs> Drakes? Uh, I didn't think that anyone would be able to hear my thoughts. Let alone a strange entity. Anyways, you can think of me as a... Yes, your senior. You listen to me and everything should be well. Why the hell should I listen to you? Where are we? Looking around, you try to find something in the distance that could help you identify your whereabouts. However, everything is as dark as before. You couldn't even see your own arms. Am I... dead? Again. Sheesh. You're so dramatic. Lighten up. You're still alive. Barely anyways. What the hell happened? I remember that I was trying to use the orb and then... Yep, you got distracted, you moron. The one thing that your big mentor told you not to do. So, it was all real? Aww. They? They? Day? What oh. does that mean? Why do you think you're here? But where is here? Again, you haven't answered my question. Ah, oh, right. My bad. Well, think of this as your, um, safe space. That's it. I guess some would call it your subconscious. Ah, this is getting really bizarre. I'm literally talking to a faceless entity. No, I'm talking to no one. I'm still here, you know. Are you even real? I am as real as you want me to be. Come on! It does not answer s. <laughs> so I can just. You imagine yourself erasing the entity speaking with you. Hey, that's rude. I was only joking. I am real. Have you always been uh, inside me? That's a weird way of phrasing it. But no, it's only been a day or two. You've just entered me. Okay. <laughs> Good to know. Wait, does that mean you can see what I'm seeing? Only if you want me to. I've already seen your junk anyways. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He, he did enter me, so I mean, I guess that makes sense. Jeez. What? That's what he said. <laughs> How unchristian of you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, crap. What the f***? Kidding. Kidding. Like I said, I will only be able to see things that you are comfortable in sharing. But why are you here? To put it in words, you'll understand. You took my house, so I have to go with you. Your house? Are you referring to the orb? The ball-shaped glowing thingy jumping? <laughs> yep. Thingamajig. <laughs> I've got a couple of other houses, but for some reason, I've been told to stay in this one. I get a sense that you're going to ask lots of questions, so I'm just going to speedrun through it, alright? I think the time is running out. I can communicate with you because I just can, alright? Since you took my house and activated it, I'm obligated to follow you around. Because, well, if you are dead, then my house will be destroyed. Maybe it is that little tiny pink Digimon. It is. <laughs> it does sound like <laughs> it. I wouldn't have cared if that happens, but since I'm currently bound to it, a destroyed house means that I'll die as well. And I don't want any of that. I'm too young to die. Right. So, my goal is to save, keep you from killing yourself. Now Same that thing. I see your ability, I've got my work cut out for me. Ouch. It's not like I intended to die as well. Whatever you say, for your information, without me you'll probably have bit in the dust. Thanks to your lack of attention, you basically activated the self-destruct mechanism. Fortunately for you, I was able to stop it from reaching its max power before it activated. As much as I was able to anyways. Self-destruct? Just for that? What can I say? Houses can be quite volatile. This is insane. It is what it is. 
Does that mean that there are other uh, you living in these houses? As far as I'm aware of, there aren't a lot of other me. I'd say you're pretty lucky to have a senior watching over you. Ah, yes. Who doesn't love a sarcastic senior? I know, right? You know what? Never mind. Whoops. Looks like you're waking up. Maybe we'll see each other again next time. Name. So, you didn't answer shit, basically. No, nothing I can communicate with because I can. And, uh, <laughs> That's all that he yeah. explained. Hopefully, not too soon. Can't wait. Are you being sarcastic with your savior? So ungrateful. Right, right. My bad. Thank you for saving me. That's better. You roll your eyes with a sigh. Oh, right. Before I go, do you have a name? Name? All right. My name is... It's Voice One. That's a good name. Yeah. Yo! You're awake! You're like another bro. You're finally awake. As you regain your vision and slowly sit up from laying down, you could see a bluish canine sitting on the grass right in front of you. He's smiling at you innocently and without a shirt on. I thought he put that back on when they left. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> his voice is gruff and deep, and his cool aqua eyes stare you down. Ah! <laughs> God. In an instant, you quickly shuffle yourself backwards, pedaling with all your limbs until you are a distance away. What distance, though? How many marbles, Drake? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> the wolf then slowly get him... The wolf then slowly get himself on his feet. Who the hell are you? Please don't tell me I got transported to another world. Another world? So you really are from a different world. What? <laughs> Does that make you an alien, then? An illegal alien? Stop! <laughs> Boo! What? They have aliens in this world. I'm just messing with you. You are name, right? How'd you know my name? <laughs> Where the hell is Mr. Oppenheimer? Bye, soccer. You're dead. No use to me. Looking around you, frankly, you try looking for the lion, but there seemed to be no one else except the wolf present. You reavert your gaze towards the now standing wolf. Man, he's big and scary. Hey, kid, don't worry. I mean no harm. Promise. My name is Roderick, by the way. Nice to meet you. Oh no, are we gonna call him like that? Roderick. Yes. <laughs> I'm a friend of Grain, the big cat you've already met. Grain. Okay, Roderick. <laughs> no. And just calling me with Rod Rick is fine with me. Rod, Rod Rick. Rick. The big canine offers you a handshake with a toothy smile. His aqua eyes look at you with interest. They're closed, actually, but I'll give that a pass. You take his big hand in, subtly having a feel of his somewhat rugged texture paw. His slightly musty yet gentle fur brushes your skin, giving you a weird yet pleasant sensation. His fur, it feels gentle. Having learned from your past, you keep the handshake in a respectable amount of time before retrieving your hand back. Phew. Anyway, you mentioned Gran? Could have sworn I heard his voice earlier. You did, but then shite hit the fawn afterwards, so he went away to go do something. <laughs> what? <laughs> Your Leon friend also went away to get something as well. Not sure where, though. God damn it, Dodger. Grain asked me to stay here to watch over you while he's gone, hence why I'm here. We would have brought you over somewhere else, but we weren't sure how serious your injury is, so we played it safe and didn't take you to a hospital. I see. You're a friend of his, huh? You slowly get back on your feet, dusting off your shirt and pants in the meantime. Sorry. We're roommates. Oh my god, we're, we're roommates. roommates. <laughs> we were just making our way back home after a joke, then Grain saw you and headed towards your direction. Then I think I saw something bright coming from your hand, and well, let's just say things weren't pretty. Yeah, I figured. How long have I been out? I'd say around 10 minutes or so. Oh god. What is this god. accent you're giving him? <laughs> With your cheeks getting warm, he realized something. Did any of you perform CPR on me? Oh no. Please tell me yes. <laughs> Kapur. Oh god. You were still breathing when you got we got to you, so it wasn't really necessary. Oh, that makes me wonder though. Were you hoping that we did? Wow, <laughs> Roderick. Maybe from that tiger, huh? Or your Leon friend? Or maybe from me. With a sly smile, the wolf winks at you. W what? That, it's nothing like that. He he he. You're cute. 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 Your cheeks become redder as you struggle to maintain your eye contact with the wolf. I'm just messing with you. 
Relax, Name. With a peal of nervous laughter, you reply. Ha 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 ha. Okay. How are you feeling now? Any aching parts? I'm still feeling a little bit lightheaded. My arms are a little sore too. No broken bones? No nothing? I don't think so. At least not that I'm aware of. HM, that's a relief then. How about we sit down on that bench over there instead of just standing around? Good idea. Come on then. You walk ahead of the wolf towards a nearby bench. Once you arrive and take a seat, you notice the wolf slowly bending down to pick up his shirt off the ground. You can see his back muscles flexed underneath the afternoon shine. His smile never seemed to be leaving off his face. Then he promptly looks at your direction before breaking into a light jog to take a seat next to you. He made sure to keep a respectable distance between you and him before he sits down on a smooth wooden bench, his dirty shirt hanging on his left shoulder. It's not shirt on the shoulder. Plot hole. <laughs> Plot hole, yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, you don't need to tell me anything that happened to you in the last couple of days. Green already told me the gist of it. I'd imagine that you're probably tired of having to retail the same things over and over again. I suppose Roderick must be pretty close friend with Gran if he shared that information. I should be fine. He did? Well, I guess it's fine since you're his roommate and all. Although I don't know if I want everyone to know my situation. I won't tell anybody. It's a promise. Thank you. But why... Are you shirtless? Does it bother you? Not really. It's just that, you know, we're in a public place. Oh? So you wouldn't mind it if we were in a more private setting? You know what I'm gulping. Oh my god. Mm. I'm just kidding, JK LOL. Just a prank, bro. The reason I took it off is that you got blood all over your face. I had to use something to wipe them off. Mm, so you, so you use your sweaty shirt. shirt after a jog. Yeah. <laughs> Since I didn't have anything else with me, it was either my shirt or my pants. And I'm pretty sure Green would be highly annoyed if I had chosen the latter option. <laughs> highly annoyed. <laughs> oh. I like him. <laughs> it was either his pants or his shirt, huh? Also, blood? Oh, yeah. You had a lot of it on you. It was a terrible sight. Sorry that I couldn't get them off of your shirt, though. You look down on your shirt and notice that there are blood stains on it. You check your arms for any sign of bleeding, but to no avail. Then you remember the fuzzy memory of you coughing up blood before passing out. Uh, well, thank you, Roderick. No biggie, Kaid. You look better when you smile, eh? Um, yeah, thanks. Why does he keep doing that? It's so embarrassing. I won't be surprised if my cheek is looking like a disco ball right now. Ugh. Uh, Anyo, do you know when they'll be back? Do you mean Grain or your Leon friend? B both? I have no f***ing idea. <laughs> Why did you even ask me to specify? <laughs> Just wonderful. Do you want me gone that badly already? We haven't even talked about anything. No, it's not that. I'm just worried about my lion friend and wh whether he's been injured or something. The wolf breaks into a laugh. <laughs> I didn't think you'd need to worry about that tank of a man there, Namai. God damn it. <laughs> I'm sure he got out off that without a scratch. What happened to you though? From where I was, I swear I could visibly see the ground around you trembling. And your scream. It was terrifying, to say the least. I didn't know that something like that could happen. It's not often that you bump into an OBS user. <laughs> no! Can we call a bro user? Bro user. They're usually very quiet about it. But let's forget about all that stuff. You're fine, and that's all that matters. Huh. Yeah. How about that Leon friend of yours? Are you two together or something? What do you mean together? Don't be coy with me, Namaiwa. We arrived in this world like two days ago. Like, what do you mean? <laughs> I was referring to whether you two are boyfriends or not. I again, I just met him. I just met him. They have boyfriends in this world? Don't you dare. Boyfriend? I wasn't being coy. And it's nothing like that. You can't tell me that you're not at least interested in him, right? Not really. I know, I am. Do you're interested in, like, everyone. What, what are you talking about? I... Kidding, kidding. I'm never serious, like, ever. I'm just messing with you. So if he's not your boyfriend, then why are you with him? Am I not allowed to hang out with people? Why, why, you you say, say, why does that matter? matter? Am I not allowed to hang out with another guy? Ah, uh, that's fair. But there must be another reason why, right? 
He has an ostrich. <laughs> Already digging into our personal life, dude. We just met. Well, yeah. He knows some information that's quite important to me. Oh, tell me all about it. I'm not even sure if I'm allowed to distribute this information. Let's just say he knows where my father is. Did, did you lose your dad? In a way, yeah. Would you mind sharing your tale with your new acquaintance? What do just you can tell me that? everything. We just tell me your life story. No pressure, though. You're free to say no, but seriously, tell me. Grain has told me a summary of what happened anyway. He broke your trust, but he never mentioned anything about your favor. Should I really be telling this to another stranger? Don't tell him. Why would you tell him? You just met him. You, if I just woke up after coughing up blood to a big wolf that asked me, Hey, tell me your life story. Tell me about your father that you lost. I w no. I, I don't think I should tell him. I say that out loud, apparently. It's none of his business anyway, right? I think it's better if I keep things quiet. Better play it safe. Sorry, I am not sure if I'm comfortable sharing. Don't worry about it, I understand. Maybe I'll tell you more about it in the future. Oh yeah? Well, I'll be sure to look forward to that. So, uh, what exactly happened after I fell unconscious? Oh man, it was quite intense. Hands were thrown and voices were raised. Luckily, there wasn't anyone else around. Otherwise, things might have gotten blown out of proportion even more. Was it really that bad? Yeah, it was. I'll just run you down on what happened. A little short while after you felt unconscious. Ooh. What the hell's going on here? Uh, Dion's hands are trembling from the recent shock he's just witnessed. The York. <clears throat> Sorry to bother you, fellow civilians. But we just had a little mishap. Huh. Please, you may move along. You call this little? Name down there is literally down on the floor, you maniac! What the ever loving f did you do to him? Oh! The tiger, blinded by anger, shoves the lion back. Is that what? our food of a f? I day? said an hour from now. No! Already? Well, now we have food that's gonna be cold, yay. The lion, on the other hand, is simply dusting off his shirt and readjusting his tie, seemingly unfazed with the physical confrontation. Whoa, 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 Grain! Easy! Ah, uh, now I remember. You're an acquaintance of his. Yes? I believe we briefly met yesterday in the police department. Answer my question, damn it! This is none of your concern, Tiger. Jeez. Hmm. F you, lion. F you too. Please, just be on your way. I'll make sure that he is taken well care of. None of my concern. The last time I checked, Name is supposed to be staying inside the police department. Yet here he is with a stranger, sprawled on the floor and barely breathing. A tiger points towards Name's unconscious body furiously, his teeth grating against each other as if he's ready to bite. If you are concerned about him being in probation, I've already got the documents to cover that. Mr. Forsberg was kind enough to arrange this agreement. Documents? What the hell's the chief thinking? The tiger shifts his deep blue eyes towards Name with a mixture of fear and worry. After a bit of time, his eyes catching something. Isn't that an orb? Ooh. Have you been teaching him about the orb? Those things are dangerous! No wonder he got into this bad of a state. The kid is literally new to this world. He doesn't know any better about the orb or throwing a screwdriver in a washing machine. What the hell is wrong with you? Again, this is none of your business, Tiger. As far as I'm aware, the two of you are only acquaintances. He's my boy toy. What the? Why you? The lion releases his f <laughs> You're looking at the food. <laughs> I'm looking at the label. <laughs> the lion raises his fist, getting ready to throw his hand towards the lion. The lion is raising his fist to punch the lion. I think the tiger. Big cats. They're both big cats. It's difficult yeah. sometimes. Before that, however, the blue companion grabs him under his arms, looking at, locking him tightly. Sheesh, Grain. You're acting awfully aggressive. This isn't like you, buddy. I. Ellipsis. Realizing what has gotten into him, the tiger took a deep breath. You can let me go now. You're not going to suddenly pounce on him after I let you go, right? Just let me go. 
please. <sighs> okay. Without a warning, Name gave out a coughing fit. Spurs of blood coming out of his mouth, slathering his already bloodied face. As if on cue, the three of them rushes to his body. Oh sh! New York. Name. We need to clean the blood off his face before it dries. Why? Why? The wolf takes off the shirt. What are you doing? I'm gonna use my shirt to wipe off the blood. What? Your shirt is dirty. <laughs> Don't do that. Do you have any better option? You could use my face. <laughs> my apologies, Mo Wolf. I seem to have lost my handkerchief. <laughs> It's settled then. Why does he look so happy about that? I don't understand this. Hell fetishes. yeah, man. <laughs> with his shirt off, he begins to gently wipe the blood off your face with his dirty shirt, smearing the sweat all over your face. Taking extra care not to put any unnecessary force. The lion, on the other hand, gently holds Name's head in position to help the wolf in cleaning the blood. There you go. Thank you, my wolf. I really appreciate the gesture. No worries. We need to move him. What? Where? Anywhere that has medical expertise. I don't think it's safe to do that. What if he's injured or his broken boat? That's exactly why he would... <laughs> <laughs> We'd risk causing him more pain in a hospital. We should wait for a little while and see if he'll wake up. Then if not, we can bring him over to a graveyard and bury him. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just Jesus. get a medic. Just just call an ambulance. How hard is it? <laughs> Do you, maybe there's no ambulances in their world. Okay? What is this? Like there's English and there's Spanish. There should be ambulances. <laughs> Logic. Roderick, did you bring your phone with you? I need to call somebody. Weren't you the one who told me to put my phone away with yours inside your bike's trunk? Shit. You're right. Can you do me a favor and watch name over while I go get the phones? I'll be sure to bring back a spare shirt and a bottle of water. Yeah, buddy. No biggie. Thanks. I'll be right back. With that, the tiger promptly gets up on his feet before breaking into a jog towards the direction of the parking lot. If you also wouldn't mind, my wolf, but could you also kindly watch over my York for me? I need to look for some medical places of equipment. Preferably a first aid kit in case his condition worsens once he wakes up. Oh yes, I can do that, big guy. <laughs> yes. Big guy? Of course, you have my thanks. Also, sorry about my friend's behavior earlier. He can be quite protective sometimes. He's not usually like that, but I think something hits a little close to him when he saw him. Never mind. I see. Thank you for clarifying this with me. The lion stands up and briskly walks away. Sigh. I hope everything will be okay. And Why that's how I met your mother. Oh no. What? <laughs> mm -hmm. More or less, anyway. Name, are you good? I never thought that something like this would happen. It's all my fault. If I hadn't lost my focus, then. With a hand clutching your face, you quietly sob in the afternoon light. Ellipses. Then maybe those two wouldn't have hated each other. Why are you sobbing about this? What do you mean? If I'd kept my focus back then. And the incident wouldn't have happened. I lost my focus, which was the one thing that my mentor told me not to lose. I couldn't even do that. Ellipses. The wolf, unsure what to do, fidgets a little bit in his place. Everything is silent, with only the sounds of chirping birds flying in the air. After a little while, your breathing becomes steady as tears stop streaming down your face. You'll be alright, Kimi no Namaiwa Desu Chan Chan. And oh, no. Everyone makes mistakes, but we best we can do is learn from it. Besides, everyone's still alive, right? Little injuries here and there would be fine and probably won't stop anyone. So try not to dwell on that aching pain in your dislocated arm too much. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and hey. wipe those tears from your face before a grain returns. You baby, you wouldn't want him to think that you're a crybaby now, would you? <laughs> I guess you're right. Can't believe I cried for the second time today. With a smile slowly forming on your face, you wipe the tears off your face with your sleeves. Thoughts? Man, I stink. It's because of his shirt, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Just realized it's been a couple of days since I took a shower. I'm really hoping to be able to take one soon. 
You give out a deep sigh as your gaze lazily pans over the lake. Something the matter, Kimi no Namae wa Desu Chan Chan Kun, Senpai? It's nothing. I just haven't had the chance to take a shower since. Well, you know why. Come to think of it, you do smell a little odd. Yeah, like your armpits, Roderick, like your armpits. I guess it makes sense now why you're pretty smelly. Uh, I know. No need to tell me twice. The two of you spend the next couple of minutes gazing over the lake in silence, with the wolf tapping his fingers on the wooden surface to a beat. Dot dot dot. Then the tiger and the lion returns. Took you long enough, Grain. Couldn't help it. The parking lot was kinda far away from here. Anyways, here's your spare shirt. The tiger throws a similar looking shirt towards the wolf. The wolf deftly catches it with one hand. Thanks, buddy. Oh, and... Here's some water for you, Name. I'm glad to see that you're okay. The tiger hands you a small water bottle, which you graciously accept. How are you feeling? Thanks, Gran. You twist the cap of the bottle before you begin to drink half the contents down. Ah, that hits the spot. This big mud hasn't given you any trouble, has he? What are you talking? The tiger quickly covers the wolf's snout with one hand. Ah, da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> Let Name speak for himself, you horny mutt. You mean Roderick? Oh, he's been fine. With an annoyed grunt, the canine forcefully removes the tiger's hand, and the tiger putting no resistance to it. Blech! Your hands are so musky! <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Although it's a pleasant surprise that you actually behave this time around. What do you mean? I'm always on my best behavior. Right. Ahem, <clears throat> Mayork. I hope that you aren't suffering from any uh, permanent injuries. Is there any part of your body that may require some medical attention? <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> I think I'm fine, Mr. Oppenheimer. Omer Oppenheimer. I was quite thirsty before, but now I think I'm okay. Can't lie, though. A, a good rest and a shower sound really good right now. Oh, in that case, come on over with me to my place and you can take a quick warm shower before I drop you back off to the police station. How does that sound? That sounds... Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hold it right there! There's no way I'm gonna let Name come with you after what just happened. He's coming with us. Uh, Green, I don't think there's enough space for the three of us if he comes along. Your bike is great and all, but two people of our size and him is really pushing it, don't you think? We'll push you out. Don't get me wrong, though. I'm fine with Naomi coming along with us. It's fine. I was planning to ask Dave if he'd pick us up in his car. Well, alrighty then. With all due respect, Tiger, Mayork will be coming with me. Well, they're fighting oh, over me. They're of fighting course over they are. us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Stop it. Oh, God. And let you endanger his life again? I don't think so, lion. Don't be rough. Let me remind you that it was an unfortunate accident. And frankly, it is none of your business. A pretty f***ed up accident, if you ask me. The atmosphere around suddenly feels very tense. The tiger is grating his teeth, his blue eyes glaring back towards the lion's unwavering gaze. What the hell is going on? Roderick! Woo! Annoyed with how the two are handling the situation, the wolf made his move. You guys are acting like children! Come on, you're better than this! My apologies. I'm not sure what came over me. My bad. Maybe instead of fighting each other like kids, how about we just ask Naomi about what he wants to do? There's a brief. <laughs> uh -huh. God damn it, Jen! I see what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose that would be the fairest way to solve the situation. And how about you, Grain? I guess I'm fine with it. As long as he chooses me. Great! It's settled then. The two of you better not be angry with each other or Naomi after he made his choice. As expected. Yeah, I get it. What's the grand spread with this? There, he has like a little fluff on the back. Do you see that? That's just Oppenheimer's tail. Oh! <laughs> okay! <laughs> that oh. is Oppenheimer's tail. <laughs> I thought that was like his fluff. I was like, what is this? What is this? <laughs> oh, Drex! Well then. Are they entangled? No! No! I must drop my croissant! 
<laughs> he has a soundboard of me now. <laughs> you killed him! How about it, name? Where do you want to go? Oh crap. Dun, dun. I have to make a choice. Wait, well, I'm not an fight, option! Fight, fight, what the hell? <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for watching. We're gonna we're gonna end it here for now. And uh yeah, tune in the next episode. <laughs> <laughs>